there, I'm KJ Walker from Decentraland and No Poly Models World. And today we're going to take a look at creating wearables for Decentraland. So let's get into it. The first question most people ask is whether they can make wearables for Decentraland. The answer is yes, though for them to be minted on the platform, your wearables must be approved via the DAO. The DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization and it's a fundamental part of Decentraland. The DAO allows all members of the community to vote on which items can be minted. This helps stop offensive or copyrighted materials being minted or the market being flooded with excessive copies. Now, let's get into the 3D stuff. There are guidelines for the amount of triangles and textures for wearables, and they are no more than 1,000 tries per wearable, or 500 for an accessory, and no more than two textures of maximum size 512 by 512 pixels. A wearable doesn't have to be a traditional item of clothing because it replaces part of the avatar, kind of like Lego pieces. For example, most t-shirts have arms and hands, but the pirate torso has a skeleton instead. Wearables can also hide other wearables, so your imagination is the limit when it comes to designing wearables for Decentraland. Have fun with it! There are a few steps to making a wearable, starting with modeling the asset. For this, you may need to create more than one model for different avatar shapes. For example, this is one t-shirt and some different shape options. Players can mix and match wearables, so certain vertices need to stay in the same place, like the hips, ankles, and neck, to avoid disconnected body parts. Because of this, it can be easier to model around the shape of the avatars so there's a link to them in the box below. Once the asset is modeled, we can texture it. For any areas of skin, we'll apply the same skin texture as used on default avatars. This texture is then tinted by the avatar editor in World, so users can customize their skin. Make sure not to change the name of the skin material, as this will prevent the engine from reading it correctly. For areas of hair, you can do the same thing and apply the hair material used on default avatars, which is also a grey that can be tinted and customised in world. It's important not to change the names of the hair materials either, and to avoid changing the skin and hair UV mapping where possible. For the clothing itself, you can use a pre-made colour atlas, which you can find linked below, or you can plug in an image texture of your choosing to create a pattern or a hand-painted asset. Bear in mind that if you use the pre-made color atlas, your wearables will load much faster. After modeling and texturing the asset, it's time to do the skinning or weight painting. Let's apply all transforms to the model first and then parent it to the default avatar armature with automatic weights. Now the influence of each bone is set and it can be modified with weight painting. Adjust the skinning and move the bones of the armature to see whether the wearable is moving nicely. Any parts of the wearable that are going to intersect with other assets need to be fully weighted to the same bone. For example, the vertices around the base of the neck on the head and the upper body all need to be fully weighted to the neck bone without any influence from other bones. Other key bones are the head bone, hair, earrings, tiaras, eyes, eyebrows, mouth, and any accessories that go with the head need to be fully weighted to the head bone without any other influences. The neck bone, for the main head and upper body intersecting vertices. The hip bone, for the ring of upper body and lower body intersecting vertices. The right leg and left leg bones, for the lower body and feet intersecting vertices. Once you're happy with the weight painting, it's time to export your wearable as a GLB. Select the wearable and then the armature and go to export, export as GLB and check these boxes. Selected objects, Y up, skinning, vertex colors, materials, and UV maps. Now your model is ready, but there are a few more steps to turn it into a wearable. On your computer, make a new folder and give it the name of your collection. Make sure everything is lowercase and the name is no longer than 15 characters. Open the folder and create a new folder inside. We're going to name that according to the category of your wearable, and also in lowercase. 
For example, your item may be feet, upper body, lower body, eyewear, mask, etc. Open that folder and inside we're going to make another one with the name of your item followed by its category. Make sure it's all lowercase and that you use an underscore to separate words instead of spaces. Okay, we're going to put a few things in that folder and as always you can find links to all of these resources down in the box below. First off, the GLBs of the wearable, i.e. the wearable and its possible versions on different body shapes. Next, a 256 by 256 pixel thumbnail of your model in PNG format with a transparent background. We'll call this image thumbnail.png in lowercase. We also need a thumbnail for OpenSea. This one can be a bit bigger, 124 by 124 pixels and also in PNG format. For this image, we won't use a transparent background, but rather a colored background in accordance with the rarity of the wearable. This image must have the same name as the folder it's in, and all in lowercase. Finally, we need an asset.json, which is a piece of code which will determine how the wearable behaves. It's easiest to start with a ready-made asset.json, you can find one of them linked below. Now you can change the fields of data to match your wearable. The name field must match the name of the folder exactly, and directly underneath you can give it a cooler name, with capital letters. This is the name that users will see. Type the category of your wearable, add some tags, and determine whether it should hide or replace anything. Then add paths to the GLB models, add a rarity and a description. Save your asset.json and celebrate, you've made a wearable. All it needs now is a smart contract and minting. Those are the main things to know about making wearables for Decentraland. If you'd like to learn more about building for Decentraland, you can take a look at this playlist. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please put them in the comment section below. Check out the box below for links to relevant documentation and feel free to visit my website, Low Poly Models World. Well.